Good morning, welcome back. Or if you're new here and this is the first video you watched, if you enjoy what you see, I hope you'll hit the subscribe button and hit the like button. I'd appreciate it and it helps the channel. Today, I'm gonna to talk about and show you my new truing stand. I've been working on this truing stand right here, which is a Park TS2 for over 40 years now, built hundreds of wheels on it. And I've decided I need the new truing stand because things have changed with wheels and Park came out with the TS4, which has a lot of nice new features. So that's what we're gonna to do today, coming right up. I think Park's TS2 truing stand has been around since the 70s. I've got one on the right here from 1993, and then the other stand on the left, my stand that I've been using all these years, is uh, probably around 1979 or 1980. Um, the difference is this stand on the right has one of Park's bases that they make for the stands. You pay a little extra for that. My stand has a base because in the 80s, Park didn't make that nice base they have now. And so a friend of mine, a woodworker named Gus, made me this custom base, and it's a beautiful base. It has a drawer in the front that allows you to put all your spoke wrenches and truing supplies inside there. And these are really good stands. Shops still using these. Um, it's just that wheels have changed, hubs have gotten wider. For example, we'll take this pretty standard wheel out and we'll take a through axle hub, modern through axle hub, a boost hub. And for this, you spread the uprights to fit it in. And of course, this has got slotted ends. So you have to use through, through axle adapters, these little guys here. And then if you put this in here, you'll notice that it's actually a little bit too wide for the uprights. And that's a boost hub. There are hubs a lot wider than the boost hub now. And this is one of the reasons that the TS2 won't work on every single wheel you might want to put into it. And why an upgrade was in the cards for me. So we'll move some stuff around here. Take out the old. And there's the new truing stand, just arrived. I had reached out to Park and asked them about it. They told me that every single one of these they're making right now are pre-sold. So you have to sort of get in a line, place your order, and then when it's built, they'll send it to you. So I bought one and waited a little bit, and it arrived the other day, and I'm pretty excited to open it up. See if this works. Light disaster, but pretty much came out unscathed. Park TS4 truing stands are machined, welded, assembled, and calibrated in their St. Paul, Minnesota factory right here in the USA. Put together a lot of truing stands, so I kind of know the drill. It's pretty easy to put together, just two knobs you have to install. Love that sticker. Trust me, I'm a bike mechanic. <laughs> A little trick, getting it apart. Pretty cool, they got the build date right on it, February 25th, 22, built by, hey, could be JC, could be JL, which would be my initials. Put a little lube on here.
the way park tool stands come is without a base you can clamp it in a vise to hold it or it's set up to bolt to a bench too if you want to put it in a permanent location in your workshop these are nice these are little nylon tips that snap on here to protect painted rims carbon rims anything that might get scratched you can put these little nylon tips on if you don't want to use them they come right off they're replaceable if you wear them out but i've never worn out a pair before this is a what they call a little speed knob goes over here so that for opening and closing the uprights you can crank it faster pretty cool so that's set up to put it in a vise or to bolt it to a bench but i'm going to put it in the new park tool base and that's right here put these end pieces into the stand and then you'll be able to place it in a base you can feel you pick this thing up it's made of heavy duty steel and it's powder painted in park tool blue and chrome plated so we've got to try to pound these guys in here This guy is adjustable. Got these little Allen screws here. So So when you get the width set right you take the truing stand out you can tighten these guys up and then there's a place on the side here for bolts that thread into the holes here And then you've got a through bolt here. And the beauty of this setup is that the stand can rotate backward and forward so you can orient the caliper, the indicators that you look at when you're true in wheels, wherever you want them in your line of sight. And you can see that they've put a white panel here and a white panel here. So when you look past the rim, past the caliper pointers, the indicators, it makes it easier to see because you've got a white background to look at. And whichever orientation you put it at, 
you tighten the knob, I haven't put this through yet, but when you tighten the knob, it'll lock it in place. In case you've never owned a park chewing stand, the thing that makes them so fun and enjoyable to work on, because you have to think about it, if you're building wheel on a, on a chewing stand, you know, depending on how fast you build wheels, how good you are, how skilled you are, you know, it might take you 45 minutes to an hour to true intention the wheel. So it's kind of like your workstation, like somebody sit in front of a computer all day while the wheel builder sits in front of one of these guys all day. So the ease of putting wheels in and taking wheels out and setting the chewing stand up makes it a big difference saves time state can save frustration some stands you have to mess around with a lot of stuff to put the wheel in the stand park truing stands it's really simple we want to put this wheel in here you notice that the for this wheel there's notches in the top of the dropouts or the top of the legs of the truing stand and to tighten and it up so that it accepts the wheel get it just right and the wheel drop right in now with a park stand you don't over tighten it you just snug it so the wheel's in there now the wheel is seated in the truing stand now the axle is seated here and on a park truing stand just the act of putting the hub in and seating it in the notches in the dropouts centers the wheel in the truing stand so now we screw this knob here the caliper will come up. And even on this 16 inch wheel, it comes right up, comes right into the wheel. So that's a little tiny wheel. Stan can handle it fine. Notice that the tire's on. You could take the tire and tube off, but it works fine with the tire on or the tire and tube off. So now we'll switch and we'll go to a much bigger wheel. So we'll go from a 16 inch wheel to a modern 29 inch wheel. This will be a through axle wheel. To make room for it, all I have to do is turn this one knob again, open the caliber a little bit with this knob, We'll take this wheel out, which was a quick release wheel, which went in these notches. And this is a through axle wheel. So for this boost spacing, we'll just open the stand up. And you'll notice that on the inside of the stand now it has built in through axle adapters. So all we have to do is Put the hub in there, bring the through axle adapter in till it seats on the axle. Again, just bring the caliper in. A full-size two-niner wheel. You can even put fat bike wheels in here. Tires up to six inches wide will fit. So you get the 29 plus wheel in here down to a 16 inch wheel and the arms of the truing stand will space from seven will handle axle spacing from 75 millimeters to 250 millimeters. So that's a huge distance it can span and this one stand can do both of those. Now I actually like the park bases a lot, even though I showed you the custom base I had made for my old TS2. The thing about these nylon bases is they will flex a little bit. So if you put a truing stand on an uneven workbench or a table that's a little uh, not perfectly flat top, these will sort of flex a little bit and they won't wobble on you. They'll settle in and they'll sit flat. And what you don't want is a stand that's rocking around when you're trying to make fine truing adjustments. And these bases don't do that. They, they are pretty stable when you work on the wheel, which is really helpful when you're true in the wheel. Also, it's nice to have these pockets for spoke nipples, spoke wrenches. Uh, they even have holders for spoke wrenches over here. So they thought it through really well on this truing stand and the base that goes with it.
I hope you enjoyed this look at Park's new TS 4.2 truing stand. I'm looking forward to using it. I think it's going to make my wheel work even easier and more fun, actually. If you have a truing stand you like or you have comments about your Park TS 4.2 or older Park stands, feel free to leave a comment and I'll reply as soon as I can if there's a question in there or if you need any help. And if you're getting into wheel building, be sure to watch my other videos. I have a really popular video called How to Build Bicycle Wheels the Easy Way that's been seen by almost a half a million people so far. And hundreds of people have told me that they built wheels for the first time. I also have a video on how to find your correct spoke length, on how to keep spokes tight, on wheel terminology, and I'll have one on wheel tensionometers, spoke tensionometers soon too. So there's a library of content to help you if you're getting into wheel building that you'll enjoy. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.